In this video, I'm going to show you how to take advantage of Google's free monitoring of the mobile friendliness of your Joomla site. Hey there, Joomla fans. Tim Davis here. I'm a Joomla fan too. Thanks for tuning in to this Maintenance Monday episode number 63. And as you'll notice, things are not green behind me. They are orange because I've changed the studio around. And at some point in the future, I'll give you a tour, maybe, uh, maybe even tomorrow on our uh, live stream on Twitch. Watch me work live stream. Anyway, so thank you for tuning in today. Appreciate it if you're here, just say hi in chat. And also, I'm just wondering, actually I'm looking at the delay there. Tell me how the sound is with, uh, I've changed some things around, so there might be a delay, you never know. But we will uh, we'll sort that out. And thanks for those of you that are already there uh, watching. Yes, Vinny, I'm using my stand-up desk, and like I said, I'll uh, give you guys a tour uh, another time. So uh, the reason that uh, the, the reason for today's topic, I got an email from uh, from Google uh, um, uh, Search Console. It used to be Webmaster Tools, but now it's Google Search Console, and it was alerting me to the fact that there were some uh, there was a mobile issue, mobile friendliness issue, with the basic Joomla.com site. So I thought I would take a look at that. Um, so let's head on over to. The correct screen here, I think. It's, oh, 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 I had it right. There we go. It's going to be one more switch there. Uh, just a reminder, head on over to basicjoomla.com. If you haven't won a contest in the last year, uh, go over and enter. In the last 12 months, I mean, go over and enter for some great Joomla prizes. Basicjoomla.com forward slash giveaways, and you will see those things there. Sounds fine. Thanks, Vinny. Um, so let me show you the email that I got. Uh, new mobility usability issues, new mobile usability issues detected for site HTTPS basic um, When you register and set up your site, and we'll take a look at how to do that in a second, uh, with Google Search, uh, Search Console, then uh, basically they, uh, that's the place where you set up, site, you register your site maps and, and, and look at various things. Uh, as they look at your site, if any issues come up, if something has changed, they will then uh, alert you. So uh, on this email, I click fix mobility issues and it takes me to search console. And you will see here, got it, close that that uh, there are no errors now and this is what i found when i went after i got that mail a couple days ago there are no errors and that there are actually 48 valid urls that are working you'll see that the issue was back here on october the 22nd and it says that there's a note for that i can click view issue here and it shows me the example urls but whatever that problem was it is gone so it could even have just been uh, something odd that took place that was temporary and fix itself, or maybe a page didn't fully load properly. The, uh, as we saw the issue here was the top issue was um, clickable elements too close together. So um, maybe, uh, maybe there was a style sheet that didn't load properly. And when Google was checking out that URL, it just saw that it wasn't mobile friendly. Now this is super important because Google is really, uh, really uh, keen on mobile friendliness of websites. Uh, at least half of traffic now on the internet uh, viewing of web pages is to is on mobile devices and so uh, you can actually if your site is not mobile friendly they put a little note in the search results in Google uh, when you come up and it says site not mobile friendly and so you really want to have that dialed in uh, so that you can rank higher in the search results when people are looking either well if they're looking for you you're probably going to rank very high anyways but if you are if they're looking for something that you're talking about or something that's relevant that you have on your site then you want to uh, have everything in place to be up at the top so uh, here in uh, google search console you can go and you can take a look so things have been pretty good on the on the basic joomla.com site as you can see here uh, just this one error and in fact if i click back to the previous screen i can click on valid and i can see the number of urls that uh google search console has found and sees are absolutely fine no problems with being mobile friendly and you'll see this number goes up and down and just typically sometimes they see pages sometimes they don't see pages i have another site with thousands and thousands of pages and they only see they only report on a couple of thousand of them but uh they are there. You see earlier, I did have a, an issue probably 
uh, set content wider than screen, but again, that uh, does not exist. So what you want to do is register your sites with Google Search Console, not only just so that it's monitoring the mobile friendliness of your website, but also you can take advantage of other things that we'll perhaps look at another time. So here is how to add a site to Google Search Console. Uh, um, so we are in Google Search Console here. In fact, if I just, I'll just show you sort of the old school way that I go and find things. And it is this, I go and I will type, I'll search for webmaster tools. And then it comes up and then your top search is Google Search Console, search.google.com forward slash search dash console about. Of course, I got there directly from the link in my email. But once you get to Search Console, you will, uh, well, why don't we just go straight in off of that. It'll be taken where you can start now. I'm already logged in. It takes you to your overview and it looks like it shows you the site that's, no, that shows you the last site that you were at. So if you've not registered any sites in this, you will see, um, something different. Now you notice, like I said, it's good for more things than just uh, monitoring the mobile friendliness of your site. Here it will show you, once you've claimed your site and registered it, it will show you the performance that your site is doing in search on Google. Uh, even, and I believe these stats are there even before you claim the site. And so you'll see here's uh, total click performance. You can open a report on that, coverage, uh, enhancements, and uh, all, all kinds of information as Google is famous for. So to add, a, add your site to Google Search Console, um, if you already have a site registered in there, you know how to, but it, it goes something like this, since I can't show you uh, from having no sites registered. But you're going to, uh, I'm just gonna go down here, I've hit that drop down, I'm, I've added a property, and you're going to put in the URL of your property. Now, one of the things that's really quirky about this, and you'll see the note there, is to use the exact address of your property. For example, HTTP and HTTPS are counted as different properties. So uh, the site that I'm going to just put in now is that uh, rockettheme.basicjoomla.com site that I use for tutorials. And I'm just going to select just the first part of that URL. I don't need the administrator part. And we'll go back to, I've lost, I've lost that little pop-up. It's all right. I will bring it back this way. Add property. I'm going to control V and paste in there and go continue. Now it's going to verify the property and now it's not going to ver be able to verify this property because I don't have anything in place that yet that uh, registered with Google that shows that that site is mine. And that's because I just use it for messing around tutorials. So they do offer you some oppor uh, some opportunities here in order to, um, to verify your site. First, you can download this file and upload it to your server, or you can, uh, uh, yeah, download this file, then you upload it to the, uh, the root folder of your Joomla install. Um, or there are other things that you can do down here. You can add a meta tag to your site's homepage and they give you the tag there. You can uh, use your Google Analytics account. So if I already had Google Analytics tracking this website, it probably would have found it already or I can just verify through that. Um, but of course, I don't have that registered, have registered that. Uh, use your Google Tag Manager account and use the container snippet and uh, and or you can edit your DNS settings and then um, verify that way. So what I'm going to do is just for this right now is I'm going to put in this. I'm going to use the meta name. And um, now this really gets down to uh, the, the, the using this HTML tag. This really gets down to what product it is that you are using for your own uh, sites for how you add things to um, to verify Google. So for instance, there are plugins that you can add to your site where you just plug in the analytics. Um, or there's a, there are different methods to add a meta tag to the head of your website. And now I'm just gonna do it here just to show the verification process. Because this uh, site that I'm using here is uh, running uh, Gantry 5, is using Rocket Theme, I'm going to go to the uh, to the default theme. And uh, so this is this is very specific. I'm using hydrogen template here. 
I go to, here we are in the base outline, and then what I want to do is go to, I believe, page settings. Let's just check, I didn't practice, there you go. And in Gantry, they have this area for head properties, and you can add meta tags. Now, if I click the plus there, I think I can put that, I could type it out, but what I'm going to do is paste just what I was given right in the custom content, and I'll save that page setting. Now that tag will appear in the head of all of my pages on this website, which means that I can then go back to this verification process and I'll say, okay, verify. It's going to have a look for that tag and it says, there you go, verification method, HTML tag verified. And uh, uh, then it gives you some instructions to stay verified, don't remove the meta tag. So I'll just leave that in there. And now we can go to property. And just like that, we are set up. Now here you see it says processing data, please check again in a few days. So we'll have to see if this is the, um, whether, well, there probably wouldn't be any search results for this, uh, this particular site anyways. Um, anyways, you would come back in a couple days and see whether it's just collecting since you added the site or else it's showing you all stuff from the past. Uh, there are some other things that you can do once your site has been added in here because this is more than just a mobile friendliness that we're talking about and you would check out all of those options down at the side performance URL inspection uh, settings is the big one and uh, shows that you're verified and just uh, some you can add users too in order to see this information if you have someone helping you with your site anyways that's what I wanted to show you today uh, Google has that free, uh, let me just uh, fix my screen here. That's not what I wanted. There we go. Uh, Google has this monitoring of your website. And if, if you did something that affected the mobile friendliness of your website, Google would alert you when they saw that, when they go through, pass through on one of their regular scans of your site. And that's an incredibly uh, handy tool to have so that you can keep your site accessible to the most people who are doing searches online or who are surfing around online. In fact, I was just reading an article last night that showed that most, uh, that, that most people are using mobile in the morning when they get up and in the early part of their day. So that was an interesting stat to see. So I uh, want to thank you for tuning in at this point. We're going to continue on with some chat afterwards and I'll fire up Zoom call so we can get some voice happening as well. But if, and sorry, I noticed things shake just a little bit. I have to fix that in a new setup or I don't know if I can fix it in a new setup. Uh, but if, you, uh, if you've watched at this point and you haven't subscribed to the channel and I've earned a subscription, please do subscribe and ring that bell so you get notifications of new live streams and tutorials as they go on the channel. And don't forget to uh, check on twitch.tv forward slash basic Joomla for Watch Me Work live streams. Uh, tomorrow, October 30th, uh, I believe uh, Joomla 3.9 is supposed to be out. So we're going to be taking a look at that, uh, firing that up in the Watch Me Work live stream. And uh, we'll get together and chat and talk about the different things and hang out as we have enjoyed doing. So before we move on to chat on this, thank you again for your support of this channel. We have 1,100 subscribers now. Uh, if you have any questions, any comments, please leave them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Enjoy your Joomla sites and God bless. All right. Now let's fire up some zoomage here. I had one of the best sleeps that I've had in days. Of course, I am no longer slaving away trying to uh, get, uh, get, get this office cleaned up and set up. So let's see, I'm just gonna open up this link. I was, uh, the reason I tell you I had the best sleep was that I got up very late. And that is why I do not have this Zoom call set up yet. And I don't know the fast way to do it either. So I have to create it, create an invite and then make a URL to post here for everybody to go on. And all right, now let's find my tabs here. Here we go. Here is the, the link to the Zoom call. Come on and join in with some voice. I will join too, I guess, so that I can hear people. Let's hear about what uh, what's going on in your Joomla world. 
and uh, anything that you uh, have to share. Now let me just bring up my other screen here so I can see what we're looking at and what's happening. Turn some sound on too here. So uh, those of you that know me know that orange is my favorite color. And so that is why I went with orange here at the office. And you're going to notice there's some imperfections in the wall around here. And that is because this is actually orange paint on top of floral wallpaper and um, on top of paneling. So this is a low budget reno to try to get some things fired up. But it's going to be nice because uh, now with this setup, I'm way, way uh, better off to catch up on the many tutorials that I've been wanting to make. So click on that link if you're going to join us here in Zoom. What else can I tell you? I got a call this morning. That's partly why I'm a little slow this morning. Uh, from a client I gave a quote to back in September and they gave me the go ahead. So I'm excited about that. Uh, some new work to do and then um, uh, new work to do. Uh, they can't pay me till January, but they gave me the go ahead now. It's a uh, church and their annual budget doesn't uh, roll over until January. So... Uh, anyways, looking forward to that. They're, they're a good group and it's going to be a fun project. And it's going to involve a bunch of remote support to training. Uh, that's one of the things I put in the package was remote support to train their secretary and to train anyone that they uh, want to be uh, using their site, working on their site. All right. Oh, I'm recording here. Let me just stop that. There are three participants. I don't hear anyone yet. Chuck is there. Hey, Chuck. And Vinny is there. Uh, if you guys are talking and I don't hear you, it could just be my setup. So that's something that I would want to check into. Though my green mic is going up and down. So um, we'll just see about that. Uh, some of you are probably... Uh, anyway, so the office redesign or reno was why I didn't do a live stream last week on Twitch. I watched me work live stream because um, you hear the audio on Zoom, but you don't you don't see me. You won't see me on Zoom because the camera is being captured by Streamlabs OBS for the stream here. So my I will not show up there. Oh, and it's, I think Vinny almost said something here. Uh, anyway, so I, I had such a huge mess going on here and, uh, I, uh, I had moved the green screen around to the back of, uh, it used to be uh, at the end of the room. Uh, but when I actually for a couple of weeks had my computer on my wife's desk and put the green screen behind and I needed to advance. So I, that's why I didn't do the live stream last week. All right. So that's good that you hear the audio on zoom. And I think that's Chuck that wrote that. And uh, so we will just, uh, oh, I see Chuck, your, your mic moving. Maybe I, I can't hear you. So let me, let me sort out what's going on here. Cause that's something to do with, with me then. Uh, make sure that's, um, let me make sure that my sound is working here. And I'm going to bring up, uh, music file here just to play let's see now I see someone's talking oh I don't have any sound here right now because my okay let me just uh, disappear off camera for a second here and see what is going on. Ah, oh, there you go. All right. Oh. Sorry about that. You know what? I have a, one of the things I have here is a stand-up desk, and I think that cable probably got hooked and pulled out of the back of the computer the last time I made it go up. So now I can now I can hear. 
<laughs> yes, I hear you, Vinny. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that, everyone. It's the uh, sound of silence. How's it going? It's going well. I have to say, though, it's a little sketchy. It throws up some red flags for me when a company say, or when a business says they can't pay me until January. Oh, yes. But I, yes. Uh, yeah. I almost wasn't going to mention that. But I don't think you trust them. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I know these guys. So I've pastored with them. And I also know the process that uh, the fall is when you do all of your planning, you set the budget. And then once it's approved at the annual meeting, which happens in January, then you can start spending on that year's budget. I'm so. confusing because it's a church. Well, yes, but yes, things don't always just work out well because you're working for a church. So, but as some of you know, I have a lot of experience working with churches and these guys are great. So, and my experience is because I pastor churches. So, uh, uh, anyways, yeah, so that's not a problem. And I'm not sure, I can't get to their project right now anyways. There's no no pressure to do that anyways. So, yeah. Uh, one of the other things, too, about this new setup is that I've got more lights. I noticed a couple of weeks ago when I moved my computer to my wife's desk and uh, the lighting over there was different. It was brighter and got better resolution out of my webcam. And then, uh, so I purposefully added more lights over here so that I can get that better resolution. So it looks like you have a sun up in the top, top left hand corner. I do have, I have, uh, let's see, I've got a light up here, which is shining on this spot on the wall. And then this spot here, I think you know, it's one of the lights on the far side of the room. So that's, uh, that is good. Hey, everybody, tomorrow is October the 30th, and you really should uh, sign up to listen to War of the Worlds replay, the 80th anniversary that Vinny is uh, having on his, uh, on his I Love Old Time Radio website, which I am thoroughly enjoying. I'm finding myself excited for new episodes that are coming out. But uh, Vinny, post that in the in the in the uh, YouTube chat. There a link uh, because War of the Worlds. If those of you don't know the well, Vinny, why don't you tell them about the? You can pitch it. What do you want me to say? I'm sorry. Oh, uh, <laughs> you're telling me two different things to do. Yeah, I just wanted you to tell them why you're such a bad listener. Yeah. Um, no, the uh, tell them about uh, what War of the Worlds is and why it's. Uh, why it's significant well in 1938 uh, mercury theater on the air featuring orson wells did this halloween production of hg wells war of the worlds it was an adaption to the radio and it was adapted so it would be instead of using english towns and stuff like that it used american towns and what happened was is they it was uninterrupted it was commercial free at the beginning they said um that it was a, a a an adaption at the end they said it was an adaption but nowhere in the middle did they they talk about it and they did it like it was an actual news re report so what happened was now the the papers made this out bigger than it really was so the papers made it out to be this this global pandemic thing where people were were up in arms and everything like that. But what really happened was very few people reacted as if they did not know it was a uh, a fake broadcast, and um, it was it was the papers' way of making radio look bad. Um, so it's it's got an interesting backstory to it, but it's really exciting. Um, if you like audio dramatizations, it's one of the best out there. And so Vinny is, uh, is airing this live, and you're doing it on YouTube. Uh, at, I am. I'm risking my life and limb to do it on YouTube. At, uh, well, we'll talk about that off, off camera, see if you need any tips or anything like that, but uh, off camera, offline. But um, the uh, at 8 o'clock Eastern, so it will be exactly 
eight, uh, 80 years after the original playing of that. So I'm looking forward to tuning into that. That's five in the afternoon for me, but that's okay. The, uh, the world comes to an end earlier on the West Coast than it does on the East Coast, but we're, we're used to that. Um, anyway, so I'm really excited. This is going to be a fun thing to participate. So click on that link, head on over there, and uh, and uh, you'll see the information for uh, listening on the YouTube. What are you going to use for streaming? Did you uh, is OBS you're setting up? Yeah, I have already set it up. I've already done a test. Oh, okay. Uh, so I I should be good to go. I I don't foresee any problems happening, but it's YouTube, so problems happen. Yeah. I've started uh, rebooting my computer just before I do live streams, just in case there's some mysterious thing going on that uh, is going to choke thing or uh, things on the computer. Or there you go. There's the link. I love oldtimeradio.com forward slash live. All right. Who's excited about Juno 3.9 tomorrow? I am. Yeah. I've been using the, um, I've been using the release candidate for uh, a couple of weeks now. Oh, okay. I saw that Peter Van Westen just posted uh, um, something on Twitter. In fact, let me just uh, let me just look that up right now uh, because uh, there's something that he has ready for 3.9 that's new in 3.9. I think it has something to do with the uh, fields. Um, let's take a look here. I Twitter so bad. Well. And I, I, I did not Twitter for a long time because my f it was so frustrating on my phone. And the Twitter is a much better experience on the phone. Uh, when, and then when I got my new phone, it was, um, uh, it was uh, running so much better. And I started using And then it dawned on me. And I, I've probably said this before. I, I know I've said before. that Twitter is like uh, if Facebook... Uh, if Facebook and um, SMS texting on your phone had a love child. So it's really just sort of like private texting only. It's not private. All right, so I'm here on the Twitter here. Let's go there. And on Peter Van Westen's Twitter page. And the new release, let me just see here. He always puts up October 28th. New release articles anywhere. I think maybe that was the one that I was reading. No, I clicked on the picture there. Let's see. I went, of course, I wasn't. Um, something he's got. I think it had something to do with custom fields. I don't know if he's on right now watching this or not, but. I, I did notice that. Um... It increased in the amount of people watching as soon as you ended your maintenance Monday. Yes, for those of you, yes. Well, and that wasn't very that wasn't very quick either. And my toss up with uh, maintenance Monday is I could do a long time talking, waiting for people to come on the live stream, but then it's just terrible for people that are watching the rerun. So, uh, watch me work live stream is not uh, not that. Not that I'm not so worried about that because people will slowly come on or, or whatnot. But that's why I have the 60 second uh, uh, countdown at the beginning just to give people a little bit more time to come on. But I'll have the replay the replay out pretty uh, pretty fast today, faster than I did last week. Now that this rental is all done. Um, I I think because uh, he's got a uh, Chuck. I think he's because he's his um camera set to auto focus so when he steps or he moves around because he's not sitting down he's standing i am around a lot i think it's not focusing quickly enough on, on him no it's not uh, yeah especially if i disappeared when i was trying to figure out the plug-in and blah 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 then i come back then it says oh something new is happening and chuck just uh, your comment there about a, d a diffuser for lights yes that is probably something i should look into um, right now, I use these lights. Okay, I'm going to leave again. Um, Those are the cans, right? Right. Yeah. You know, you can put just like a little bit of um, parchment paper over. Yes, I, I have thought about that. Maybe I'll experiment with it. So basically, these are um, uh, CFL lights. They're well, I would use them for CFLs, but 
Yeah, they're uh, 5,500 K bright daylight ones. And then this just basically is a hardware light and a clamp that you clap on onto things. And so I have a number of those around. So I have thought about covering this up and uh, diffusing things. Um, I kind of thought that maybe I might go with one of those big light boxes that they have that makes a more diffused light, but uh, it's not, it's such a low ceiling in here. I probably will not do that. So maybe I will try that with some paper and fill around. And let me tell you, I've been fiddling around quite a bit <laughs> around here. Uh, yeah, and also, uh, if you want to see something really interesting, I will wake this up here. And as Vinny said, I am standing up at a desk. So if I lower the desk down to sitting height, you will then be able to... It's sort of like going through a CAT scan. And it goes down nice and low. So this was order to put this back up to where it goes. Uh, I got one of these desks just because it was so horrible sitting at my desk. And I also wanted to uh, just have see if it was going to help my energy level by standing. Well, there. at least we know you wear pants during your broadcast. I Well, this one, yes. Now that I have the stand-up desk, I have to wear pants. <laughs> ah, yeah. So, what else is new? Anything else new? Anything else we should talk about? We can save it all for tomorrow, too, if there's stuff. But Yeah, 3.9. I'm really looking forward to it. I've been playing around with it a little bit. So, um, uh, the whole privacy is... Um, is now in there, so uh, you can actually do a lot more with uh, your your clients' data, or allowing them to have access to that stuff uh, to be more GD, uh, GDPR compliant. Yeah. Cool. I'm thinking. What was it? Was it last week after Maintenance Monday? We got looking at the uh, new custom field. That yeah. The yeah, and we got playing around with that and and having some more uh, brain cells grow together for me on custom fields. Chuck There's says he could use I some... Like that, I like that field to be able to do better, um, but it's a good start. Yeah. Chuck says he could sure use some of our help. Chuck, what is it? We're here, Chuck. We're listening. We're here for you, buddy. If it's dating tips, don't don't ask. And if uh, I can't help you, Vinny will correct me. <laughs> <laughs> it's that delay that we have to wait for now. Yes, the page he's working on. I can't get support from Joomla X XTC. Uh, Chuck, I think I need to make you a um, admin here so you can paste the link there. So let me just see if I remember how to do this. Um, you're now a moderator. Go ahead and paste the URL there and we'll see what, um, we'll see what's, uh, what's there. Let me refresh. I should you know, refresh the, too. I have a problem sometimes with a lot of the uh, Joomla developers and it's not really a, their problem, yeah. but a lot of Joomla developers for, for plugins and stuff like that are overseas for me. So they keep the hours where they're up when I'm asleep. Yeah. So Although like, technically yeah. though, you are up when they're getting up. Yeah. It's okay, John, we won't hold it against you. Don't let it happen again though. Perfect, com perfect companions.org. I sense a cat site coming up. I'll preview it so you don't. Oh, okay. Kids first. Yeah, no, we knew that was going to be that. All right. Let me close a few tags here uh, and uh, switch over to. Um, I think it's. Oh, okay. This one here. You know, oh. the, um, the, uh, the, the, the domain is not the same what I expect. 
<laughs> yeah, no, that's when I saw companions, I went, oh, but then I saw perfect, and then I thought, oh, this has to do with cats, but it actually has more than cats. All right, I so you would like, you know, you know, people yeah. who like dress up as animals and date. So I'm going to close this pop up here. He says it's the oak. All right, so um, all of the content in mobile disappears. So I'm going to use Google. Uh, so I'm in Chrome, and if I hit F12. It brings up Google's Element Inspector, and then down here in the left-hand corner, you see a button that says Toggle Device Toolbar. So you can also do Control Shift M. Hey, it says. But if I click there, can you let the dogs out. I'm trying to get some support here. <laughs> <laughs> Who let the dogs out? <laughs> yeah, he's trying to get some support. Yeah, can I have a little support, please? Uh, Chuck, your microphone worked great there. Uh, so here's the mobile view. What? Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, that's good. And actually, it was a real. It's your voice sounded a little bit like you were using uh, calling in a ransom demand, and that you're using one of those voice changers. So that that added to the effect. What content? Uh, uh, what, what content's not missing? What should I do here? And go ahead and speak. Hey, you know, it just seems like uh, in the browser, especially in Firefox. <laughs> Sorry, my dog's free. No, don't worry about uh, it. All of the content seems to disappear. D define the content. Um, everything between the header and the footer. Okay. So it's showing up here for me on Chrome, but let me open up Firefox here. And drag that over. What kind of dog do you have? Uh, let's see. I got a lab pug. I've got a Boston Bull and a Chihuahua pug. Is the is the lab pug the same? That's two, right? Three. Oh, okay. So, but is the so you have a lab a pug and a terrier? No, no, a lab pug, pug mix. Okay, that's what I was... And a chihuahua pug mix. What does a lab pug mix look like? That would be... That sounds interesting. He looks like a lab, but he's got a curled tail. Okay, so he got he, he got a good face out of it. What are you telling yeah. me? A big lab attacked a little pug. <laughs> no, Vinny, a little pug... No, they, they love each other. <laughs> a, little, a little pug got a stepladder. When a little, when a big lab and a little pug love each other very much. <laughs> so here you see now uh, in this particular, what I've done is I just narrowed. This is Firefox here. Let's just uh, close some of this stuff out so we've a little bit easier to see the background. Oh my goodness! Well, that's really weird, guys, because now it's showing up. Okay. Let me just try to well, well, Chuck, you're welcome. We're glad we could help you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, if you go into the um, shows page, the 2018-19 season, yeah. there, there's no content for me in Firefox. Oh, okay. And not, okay, so what I've got here is there's... I have a map. I have... Um... Oh, yeah. Um... Yeah, there's... And then there's the... Oh, I see. I see. There's, now, this is the menu here, right? Yeah, up at the top, in the middle. So, and does that match? Is that is that a separate menu just for that page? What, you're talking the hamburger menu? Uh, this one here, yeah. No, here. These, uh, and there's a little bit delay for us, for me. Because you're on, you're on, um, you're talking on Zoom, and so by the time you see this on video, there's going to be a bit of a delay. But I'm talking about where it says home, the show's news, history, Photo history, there's the words. Yeah, that's all footer content. That's all what content? Footer. Oh, oh, okay. So, all right, that's the footer. Yeah, so if you expand it there, uh, Tim, you can see yeah. that there is actual um, stuff. Yeah, there. And, and just in Firefox, eh? Because. Yep. Uh, let me just check Chrome. I'm going to check Edge. Mm -hmm. 
No, it's, it's in Chrome it's... as well. All right, so. Huh. I think it's something with JavaScript because I was seeing, I had a bunch of errors that were pointing towards how the JavaScript was written in the head. Okay. Um, and I'm just baffled. <laughs> well, it, to me, it looks like a responsive thing. It looks like that section. Well, if that's the main content area, even the right and the left don't work. Just the header and the footer and the uh, mobile view. Huh. Did you did you at some point put in uh, some of the module classes hide from mobile anywhere when you're working on this? No, okay. not at this point. Still trying to develop this thing. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's a weird one. Um, hmm. You're only supposed to ask things that we can fix. <laughs> Speak for yourself there, Jim. Yeah, okay, well. Well, no, it uses a bootstrap grid. And now, so you're talking to, uh, oh, Mary says the first thing she checks with JavaScript errors, see if it does it with the default Joomla template. Oh, there's a good point. Um, so switch over to Protostar just and and see if that's showing because then you know for sure it's the template. Is it, it you were talking about the Joomla XTC? That's who the template belongs to, is from. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's a good point there, Mary. Good. Good thing. So. The only errors that show up on this page are, are, and they're not errors, they're just warnings. So I see here, slow network is detected. Uh, fallback font will be used while loading. Max CDN. But, um, but that's obviously it's, it's, lo it's, it's loading in the full screen, so. I took it into uh, the HTML validator, and it was saying I had yeah. I like how the site looks. Yeah, it's coming all along. It's got a ways to go. Uh, I just pulled it up in the, the new HTML validator. Um, and it's saying I have the type attribute is unnecessary for JavaScript resources. And it looks like a backward hooked arrow. Hmm. The character. And I've looked online. I just not finding any kind of yeah that uh, can you try just uh making protostar the default template and well it seems like it loads the um the before selector when it's full screen or above um above mobile but as soon as mobile hits the before selector in the row class disappears and that's when it oh, bye. and what do you mean by the before selector it's uh that all right, I did just put it up in Protostar. Okay, let's uh, refresh here. Yeah, 
showing in protostar so it's definitely a template thing and i i believe it's got to do with the uh, way they wrote their um their uh their responsive classes or uh it looks like they're they've customized the xtc trap grid so uh, probably yeah i've been waiting over a week now for some help with that. maybe um the other thing too that i've been trying to do is uh sometimes they you can uh, bump them or get in touch with them if you find a facebook page um send them a message that might because uh, they do have that there and um they've got 6800 people have liked them sometimes they'll show you the information to how fast they are responding to things so yeah they said they've been behind oh okay I just had a great conversation, you know, through email with someone on the staff. Yeah. Uh, just trying to make some recommendations because they okay. haven't had a, a new template in over a year. Uh, they just seem to lose their public forum. Yeah. As far as, like, speaking out for their businesses. So. Now, John just typed uh, in CSS, look for hash region 3.xtc fluid wrapper it has some width definition 786 pixels it changes when you go mobile Wait, you said region 3 yeah region 3 it's there in the it's there in the chat but oh, okay. on the uh, on youtube if you want to just see it if you still have that open John says, in normal display, it has defined padding 160, 40 pixels, 10 pixels, 40 pixels. Okay. Now, I've got the, the width set to fixed. Padding is 60 and 40. The region of the component padding is 0 and 24. And then John says in mobile, it says only padding 10 pixels, 10 pixels. Mm. Yeah, so you would, uh, that's an odd configuration for that because you either have 10 pixels and that does for all four dimensions or you have four, so. You know what I, because I've got 60 and 20 pixels. Let's see, and uh, John is finding that by going to the element inspector, probably here. Uh, let's see, so we're looking for region 3.xtc. Region three dot XTC. Let's see here. All right. Now, can I bring this up in a screenshot? Something on Zoom? Uh, actually, yeah. So on Zoom, what you want to do is. Um, Screen. Yeah, share your screen. At the bottom of the Zoom window, you'll see a green box that says share. Click on that. And then pick the window that you want to share. There we go. So this, everybody's going to see this, so. Oh, shoot. 
That's all right. All right, so we look at this. I'm just going to keep rambling here and saying things as people come in and out. It's always got to be someone talking on these videos, so. It might as well be you since it's your channel. Wow. <laughs> Here's my settings for region three. Okay. Um, so that's region three. That's where. So that's where you're setting. Well, that's just padding. So should I go here to responsive and see? Responsive is set to. Yes. Yeah, I mean, this is a new system for me, so I... Uh... Yeah, no, I realize. Yeah, this is very similar to, like, some of the other ones I've used, like Parallax, and um, um, and that's why I was glad when, when Gantry 5 came out. But, uh, yeah, the, the padding... I wouldn't think that the... Yeah, I mean, it could be, maybe in your padding, try having, uh, try it with four numbers. So like have, uh, like even just put zero pixels, zero pixels or something like that. I, and I forget which is first, whether it's. It's top right, bottom left. Okay. So just so that you have, yeah, just, just so that there's. And then put the PX after them as well. So it has to be zero. It has to, you have to have PX after those two zeros. Since uh, the other one, I think you have to. I don't think you do. Oh, okay. Well, it's just, I just thought because the other ones were there, so. You don't have to, because what, what, when you, when you do that, it, it actually is saying that two of the margins are going to be the same. So 640 and 40. Um, I, I, oh, okay. I just I, thought, I just thought syntax wise, it was a thing. Nope. Not, not, not for, uh, not for margins and padding. Doesn't look like it. Refresh this page. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I came back where Chrome did. But it's there now. Yeah, that's true. So that's what it was. They just needed to, because you didn't have one number, you needed four numbers. Yeah, I've got this one now. Shouldn't be a problem because you don't need to have four numbers. <laughs> Well, but yeah, but but if so, uh, so it's whatever the order is. That's top, left, right, bottom. Right. If you put no, yeah, just saying the Vinny thing should be a problem. But if you put two numbers in, how does it know what to do? Um, because it will, will what it will do is uh, the top and the bottom will be the same, and the left and the right will be the same. Oh, okay giving it two numbers so you're giving it a top and a right so it will just uh know that the other ones are are left and bottom so here's another example where it's good to be a dumb guy and think oh they must need four numbers there no it's true it it shouldn't work that way but you know that's the weird thing about stuff yeah yeah see it says shorthand now the other thing I would recommend is instead of using Hey um, Vinny for Vinny for the yeah, Mary's just like Mary says Vinny for the win, but I'm the guy that said, Hey, maybe you need to put four numbers in there. <laughs> yeah, well it shouldn't be like that. It's uh, that's all right. I don't mind giving Vinny the win. I didn't get the win in this. It, it was it was It was all of us. First there's uh, Mary with the test, that's great. And then John looks and notices that uh, that there was uh, the difference in the view in mobile only showed that. So we did it all together. 
Well, I will, I will say that uh, it's a good habit to get into with your font sizes to avoid using pixels um, to use REM. Oh, yeah? Why is that? Uh, because REMs are scalable. So when you put a pixel size as like 15 pixels, oh, okay. it's going to be 15 pixels on all all sizes. Okay. REM... Um, it, that that's scale, scalable. Okay. Well, we will give you the win for that one too, then. <laughs> for that uh, that that tip there. And just in future, if you share your your um, share your screen, you can actually set it so it specifically just shows your the the window the, you want. Yeah, you can pick a tab. Everything. Gotcha. But that's you know it works out fine. I mean, I I whatever. It, well, this will get at least the contents back now. That's going back and reformatting all this yeah yeah no that's good okay. i knew it was a css thing well guys i appreciate that <laughs> no no that's great you're in georgia right chuck what's that are you in georgia no, i'm in ohio ohio i'm in young so we're near georgia i know but is, no, I, just... I, was, I was at the joomla conference in atlanta a couple years ago okay but i was just trying to yeah because i trying to remember um um it's canadian he doesn't know our geography oh right yeah i know your geography better than you know mine that's probably very <laughs> yeah so you're you're in ohio yeah i'm probably the only joomla user in ohio <laughs> <laughs> there used to be a group in uh, cleveland but that dispersed yeah, I run into yeah, I run into Joomla users sometimes up here in uh, in Victoria, but yeah, we know we are taught we are taught American geography in our public school system here, so we need to know where all the states are and capitals. Not and... taught anything about Canada. <laughs> <laughs> we are taught zero oh, about. Canada. Yeah, well, uh, our our government wants us to know all the states and capitals for when we take over. Yeah. <laughs> Why does it matter? You just change them anyway. <laughs> I know, but it's just for attack purposes, right? Right, right, yeah. Uh, interesting tidbit. Um, in, um, I think it was either World War One or World War Two, there was a, there was a Berlin, Ontario... Ontario's the most populous province in in Canada, and so they changed Berlin, Ontario, to Kitchener. Is there a punchline to that? No, that's just a fun fact. Sorry. I kind of dozed off there for a sec. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. It's, uh, the city of Kitchener, Ontario, voted in May 1916 to change the name of the city from its original name, Berlin, through the latter half of the 19th century. In the first decade of the 20th, the city of Berlin, Ontario, Canada, was a bustling industrial center celebrating its German heritage. However, when World War I started, the heritage became the focus of considerable en enmity from non-German residents within the city and throughout Waterloo County. So there's we conflict amongst the citizens and uh, not only were residents divided by ethnicity, German and British, but long-standing civic rivalries between Berlin, now Kitchener, and Galt, it's a nearby city, Cambridge, increased the tension. The vote passed by only a slim margin. You are you were, you just kind of like decimated all we've learned about Canada in the United States. <laughs> nice to everybody. You mean you guys have like racism and stuff like that up oh, there? Yeah, there's, there's, don't let, there's racism in Canada. Don't worry about that. <laughs> I mean, I thought I, it was only in the United States. No, we got our own kind of racism up here. I thought we, we coined the phrase racism. No, Canada is actually going through quite a, uh, Canada is going through its own, um, uh, self reckoning right now because, uh, we had, uh, residential schools for, uh, First Nations children. So, Basically, for seven or eight generations, the Canadian government, in partnership with uh, uh, in partnership with some denominations, were running uh, residential schools 
and basically the idea was to take uh, they took First Nations children out of their home out of their homes away from their families to put them in school and uh, get the savage out of them and unfortunately for a, a number of people working in those schools they thought perhaps a good way to do that would be to sexually abuse them and starve them and do all kinds of things so that's really come to light in the last i mean it's it's always been there and known in a sense but the general populace didn't had no idea that that stuff was going on i mean by general populace i mean like the the, the majority of the of the of the country but um neither were was anybody concerned about kids getting taken from their families uh, and that whole savage thing and stuff like that so and in fact it's so bad that uh, so I went off to college in 1980, uh, 1984. So, and around that time, they were still in some of the schools still existed. They were underfeeding some of the kids to study the difference in uh, nutrition on them. So basically, not starving them to death, but starving them to the point where it would affect their health, and they would study it. That happened in my lifetime. So that's, uh, and so now, right now there, uh, so they, there's, there was a process for a couple of years where, um, uh, a, a organized, uh, what was the, um, truth and reconciliation commission. So judges and first nations leaders, they traveled across, across the country, heard the stories of survivors of residential schools, and then, uh, put out a truth and reconciliation report. So the country's on this path of trying to reconcile and come to terms with things. But then on, uh, um, so that's good. But then there's sometimes some, you know, the question is how much is too much? Um, and then there's also clearly people who are very racist in their views and are just tired of, the, you know, they just think, well, uh, you know, they, they, they're tax free on their reserves. They can fish whenever they want in some places. They've got it great. And it's just, yeah, so it's, so the, yeah, so the country's in the throes of that right now. In fact, in my, in my city here, Victoria, which is the capital of British Columbia, so that's the farthest west province in Canada, our, the city council in Victoria voted to remove a statue of Sir John A. Macdonald, who is the founding prime minister of Canada. The first one, and um, uh, because of it, was, residential schools were uh, started under his watch, um, basically every prime minister right up through till the last one was closed in the, I think the 80s or 90s, um, uh, has it's been happening under their watch. But his statue was removed, and then a plaque put in or a, a plaque put in place explaining why it was removed, and that became a lightning rod in the whole country, and. Um, even even some of the First Nations people here in Victoria say it shouldn't have been removed. It should have been left there for educational purposes. But that really has flared up the, uh, the nationalist right. And there is a growing nationalist right in Canada. I mean, it's, I mean, it's nothing. I mean, it's like teddy bears compared to the nationalist right in other places. But um, anyway, so that's, yeah, that's all happening in Canada right now. But... We had a very similar thing with Robert E. Lee in the South. Yeah, it's same. Yeah, down in South Carolina, right? So basically, you Canada is just copying the United States. Well, yes, uh, we don't we don't have pol men in polo shirts and tiki torches out in the street or anything like that. But uh, uh, no, but it's yeah. So in our, in our own Canadian way, we are, um, yeah. But there, yeah. So there, there, there's racism in in it's, Canada. It's, you know, every country has has something where they're not proud of or history they're not proud of. Yeah. Every country. I don't think there's one country that can maybe Switzerland, but every other country can pretty much you know ha has something about their history that you know they're not necessarily proud of. Yeah, and I, it's part of the human condition, right? So um, it's uh, it very much is um, like the Dr. Seuss book. Where there's uh, where the, the, there's the creatures that have stars on their stomach, and there's creatures that have no stars, and they don't get along, and then they start they they hop into that machine, and they the star ends up coming off, and then they're switching around, and they just lost track of who they are, but so they don't they can't they they don't know who to hate, <laughs> so. 
And I think too, when the the whole Joomla, uh, you know, the whole Joomla WordPress kind of battle and stuff that goes on, I think that's sort of indicative of. I, I think that's rooted. I mean, it's it's more of a fun thing. Some people take it too far, but people we like to, we like to know where we belong, and so we find something that we belong in and we identify with it, and then it's almost like in order the catalyst for us to be solidly in there and to really to really fit in and, and feel like we've got a place, then we have to start to vilify uh, other people. Now, having said that, WordPress does get hacked way more than Joomla. But it does. <laughs> it does. I will agree. And it's so unorganized and plugins go everywhere. You never know where they're going to go. Yes. And it, it, and I don't know if you've noticed this, Vinny, but everyone that uses WordPress, are they're all mouth breathers. Um, they are. <laughs> Anyway, so I just kind of it just comes down to this comes down to self awareness again, and and what do we have our identity? You know, what what is the basis of our identity? Who we are, and one of the things that we struggle with in Canada have struggled with in the past is one of the m major things of uh, our identity is that we're not American, and I don't say that in a bad way about America, but. But a lot of a lot of Canadian identity is like, oh, well, we're not American. Uh, and but, you know, if your identity is something that you're not like, oh, I'm not a WordPress user or I'm not a person of this color. Or I'm not if, if your identity is something that you're not, you, you, you still aren't. Uh, you're like you're like a garden that has all the weeds pulled out of it, but nothing growing. So. Well, I'm not Canadian. <laughs> Kane Canadian? <laughs> Kane Canadian. Well, I mean, you, you're talking about groups, and I, I think it's like, you know, I, and I get that because growing up, I was born a Red Sox fan, and I can't stand the Yankees. Yeah. Never have. I vote for any team that does not play. If, if the Yankees are playing against another team, I root for that team. And um, I'm just happy to say that the, the Red Sox are the world champions. So, you know. oh, did they win? Yeah, they won. So? They won last night. They beat the Dodgers. Man, they, I, how many I find it. I find it funny that they call it the World Series, and it only consists of America and Canada. Yeah, and that when the Blue Jays when the Blue Jays won the World Series. In fact, I, uh, I'll be right back. Screen's gonna be blank for a little bit. But again, I don't have a be right back picture. It's just, it's just, I'm watching the delay and it's just you and your finger and then it just goes blurry. It's an orange blur with a little black thing next to it. All right, so, oh yeah, that has a hard time focusing. All right, so this hangs in my house here. Okay, Blue Jays, 1992-1993. Uh, I lived in Toronto when we won the World Series back-to-back. It was it was a great time. It was a big recession on in Toronto, all over the place, all over North America. The recession in Toronto, they were uh, they were tearing down office buildings because it was cheaper to tear them down than it was to pay the tax on them. Anyways, uh, but our city was blessed to be excited for two years in a row and to have have that. So, but one of the things, the comments that was made and you've been. You, you say talking about the, being called the World Series was that uh, people were saying our Americans are better than your Americans. So, <laughs> I guess there's mostly Americans on the team, although uh, there were some uh, Dominicans on the team as well. So, well, like 90% of the uh, the Red Sox are made from Puerto Ricans or Dominicans. Okay, yeah, yeah. They're not, even, they're not, you know, so it's 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 just one of those things. Yeah. And as, but, as long as it stays fun, it's fun. Well, it's a game. It's supposed to be a game, you know? Yeah. And, the, and there, there is a rivalry between the Yankees and the Red Sox, and there will always be a rivalry. But it's supposed to be a fun rivalry. You know, it's like, like I, 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 have, a, I have a buddy of mine that's a, a diehard Yankees fan, and he was making comments about what he was doing. Uh, he hung up his, uh, uh, his jersey, his Yankee jersey, um, 
front of a store that was a Yankee you know, Red Sox fan. And um, so I just started teasing him. This is what this is what Yankee fans do um, during the World Series. <laughs> They're not. They're not there. Um, it, it's just. It's a fun rivalry. It's when it becomes hateful that that's a that problem. Right. You're Good welcome. Luck. You're welcome for the help, Chuck. I'm glad we can narrow it down. Yeah. And add extra digits that don't need to be used. Well, and you know that would make a great tutorial. Well, you know, and it could be something to do with that template specifically yeah. and how reading that field um, because it isn't straight CSS if you're entering it into that field. It's the way that that, that field read that. Uh, yeah. that so. But it is nice that um, they, uh, I don't, I don't think Gantry has a spot in their template set up yet for customizing CSS like that. You have to go in and edit the custom the uh, the the custom dot scss file on on the file manager so i wish that gantry did have something like that because it's it's so much easier than having to go out and edit files and switch back and forth but uh well it has a spot where you can add classes and you might not actually want those kind of fields uh because you're only li you're limited to what those fields um give you yeah I would prefer to have uh, a, a file where I edit where all my CSS edits are and all okay. my classes are um, in one spot instead of trying to hunt down. Um, and that's my problem with these things uh, is because you're trying to hunt down the 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 fields that control certain er areas. Now, John says you can add CSS or JavaScript in the editor. Um, you talk like the the article editor, John. No, I think he means the template editor. Oh, right, the template editor. Yeah, you're right. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, and I've not uh, I've done that in ProtoStar, and um, I guess you can do that in uh, in uh, Rocket Team. Let me. Uh, Switch my glasses. Let's just take a look at that. I just never think of doing it that way. So yeah, that's a good reminder. I mean, you can add um, styles to different um, uh, different articles and blocks and stuff like that. So you can add the style uh, where you can have an inline style. Um, however, I I prefer to just make a a, a class. Yeah, and John says no in Gantry. So, yeah. So, if I go into uh, extensions, templates, or scroll down to hydrogen. Are we going to see it or are we going to? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Here we go. Thanks for that reminder. That's what I'm here for. That's why I'm your sidekick. Yes, my sidekick. Um, I'm the color guy to your play by play. <laughs> Yeah, here we are. Yeah, you are right, John. That's a good reminder. I ne I often don't think about doing this. I should update that because uh, that's one of my most popular uh, tutorials is how to do it through the file manager. But to actually go in here, uh, then I always have a hard time remembering where that file is. It's custom. No. Yep, it's custom. And then it would be if you haven't oh there, i haven't i haven't done it on this yet either yeah okay so then you'd make a folder called scss and then you would create a file in that folder called custom scss Man. i've been using this a lot more than i have been logging into my ftp and and doing it that way i've been utilizing the joomla to more and more now okay Oh, he's talking about the uh, page settings, Adams. You can add custom CSS. Oh yeah, you know, I I never, yeah, but that that adds kind of a global thing where you, you don't necessarily want. Well, I guess CSS is kind of all global anyway. Yeah, no, yeah. So he's talking about the uh, content. Sorry, components. Let's go to the default theme. 
I believe it's under page details. Page settings. Yeah. It's, it's and then, um, yeah, down in Adams here. Custom CSS JavaScript. Adams can be added uh, per template. Yeah. You know, that, and that's one thing I like about Joomla is the ability to have one site but use multiple templates depending on what menu item yeah. you're using. Yeah, and there, yeah, there you go. Open up the Atom and add the CSS. Type in the new item. And then put in your inline CSS. And then in that way, that uh, with the way that uh, when you were talking about it being global, uh, Vinny, in this way, you can have um, atoms for different layouts. I mean, that's yeah. the base layout. But if we go to default here, discard the changes, um, then again, we can go down here. and actually add them right so you have a different one yeah excellent well that's an even better way that is nice that way ones that are are specific to certain layouts you go in there and you're not loading them every time you load your custom yeah so i'm just typing down a note for that because that would be a great tutorial Well, hey, I'm really glad I tuned in today. You know, it's, it's always great to have you on. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, it's great to have the whole team here. John's like our silent partner. Yes. Have you been sending John gifts on in, po I, I, in Pokemon I, Go? When I when I have gifts, he's one of the people I I primarily send. I actually I send the most to your daughter. Yes, I uh, yeah. She laughed when I told you that because she she sends more. I don't know if she actually sends more, but than me. Yeah, but she sends more than you do. You know who hasn't been sending me gifts in Pokemon Go? Mary. Oh yeah. Well, I haven't even seen one for her. No, she has never sent me a gift in Pokemon Go either. Ask scare question. Would she play it if we changed the name to Pokemon Goat? Pokemon Goat. <laughs> yeah, see, Mary already had the... Uh, John says they're rearranging rooms here so he doesn't have his own place at the moment. Probably talking about for uh, speaking. Oh, uh, Mary says maybe if we change it to Pokemon Goat. Okay, well, we'll just start calling it Pokemon Goat. Pokemon Goat. Uh, I'm gonna go I'm gonna Google that. Oh, look at. Oh, Mary. Mary, Mary, Mary. Pokemon Goat. Look at that. You can catch it. Yeah. You got it there, Mary. Poke goat. Go Goat. Pokemon. There it is, Mary. There is a goat in Pokemon, and I have not caught that one yet. I have not either. So, catch rate 45% hatched. Now, is this for Pokemon Go? Or is this for a. This don't, is don't from Bulbapedia. Community driven Pokemon. Anyways, yes. So, Mary. <laughs> Mary says crap. Yes, Mary, I think you would like to catch one of those. In fact, let's see if we've got a video of one here. Here's someone that says, we decided to jump on the bandway and go Pokemon hunting. Oh, there's a lovely goat playing po- Oh, that's it. They're just throwing Pokeballs at goats. <laughs> 
Oh my goodness. <laughs> All right, well, that's not what I was expecting, but still it's delightful. Oh, Mary says goat abuse. I think goats chew on enough stuff they can take it. Oh, This is great. No, these pokey, pokeballs aren't working right, because they're supposed to open up and suck them in there. Yeah. All right. Oh, look at this. This goes on for another another minute. I'm just gonna stop that. <laughs> they well, look huge every time they get hit. Pokemon Go mod Goat Simulator gameplay. Have you ever seen the Goat Simulator game? No. Oh my god, that is the weirdest thing. Actually, send your goat to orbit. What is this behind? Oh, so there's Go Goat and Skiddo. See, I don't feel bad about about doing this stuff now because we already we, we actually helped somebody uh, in Joomla. So we actually did something Joomla related. Oh, look at that one. That's kind of cute too, don't you think, Mary? The Skiddo. I don't know. <laughs> Chuck says, woohoo. I have to say that um, you shouldn't play Pokemon Go if you're drunk. Did you play yeah. Did you play drunk? No, but I, I feel like I, because I'm missing them now that I'm sober, but I can imagine trying to throw a Pokeball. Have, at... you, have you started doing throwing curveballs yet? I don't know how to throw curveballs. I'm supposed to throw like five great curveballs, and I have no idea. They all curve to me. You just have to Google it. I did. I watched a video. It made no sense. You put your finger on the Pokeball, and you rotate it. Spin it, spin it, spin it, spin it. And then you throw it off to the side, and you throw it off to the side that works with the direction you're spinning it, and then it will curve. You also have to throw it up a little bit, so it takes a bit of practice. No, I'm throwing it off to the side. I don't know how to spin it. How do you spin it? You put your finger on the Pokeball and rotate your finger and get it spinning around. Oh. Oh, this is like sparkle thing. Holy cow. That's awful. <laughs> nah, see, now you'll get it. Also, you can, you can, hit, you can always trash the, um, the research that's that says you have to throw five, you can trash that and get another one. I have to learn how to do it. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know you could do that circling thing. Yeah. Why would you do the circling thing? Why? I, uh, I, I just learned that there is, you get more points for throwing curveballs, which uh, makes it, which increases the likelihood of, if you throw an excellent curveball. It, there's a multiplier that makes it more likely to catch and then you can uh, get more points and more catches and so then i i googled it and watched a youtube video on it i just googled how to throw a curveball in pokemon i was watching a, I, I watched one too and he did not tell me i had to wiggle around my finger probably should have started with that mary is laughing she says she should have stuck with no so yeah you should never tell us maybe I've got to find one of these goats. I know, and then we could trade it with her. Yes, if yeah, we'd have to be right side by side. I did trade a Pokemon with my daughter the other day that I hatched from an egg that came from Australia, and we got good distance on that batch. But anyways... I don't no. know anybody around me that plays Pokemon Go, so I will never be able to do any of that. You have to, you have to start the... A Pokemon club? In, uh, inviting people. I have. I have a bunch of people. Yeah, but like people, yeah, just people that you know say, you play Pokemon Go? Yeah, that doesn't work. They all look at me like, wasn't that like over like two years ago? Yeah, I know. Mostly young people too. And then I look creepy because I'm asking young kids if they want to play Pokemon Go with me. So yeah. no thank you. Well, just don't do it from your white van. Um... I have a white car, though. Does that count? No, that, that doesn't count. 
Um, anyways, well, we don't go too long. So Mary's going to start playing Pokemon in the hopes of finding goats. Or you can entice her. You should find a goat. And then you can entice her because you're the closest one to her. Yes. Mary, we know you want a goat. Yeah. You want a pokey goat. You have to catch them all. It would be it would be a great YouTube video to go out playing Pokemon trying to catch goats and Mary wearing her goat shoes. Yes. That she she is. She has the perfect attire for it. Yeah. Well, I think it's time for me to get some breakfast. I second that. Yeah. I'm in Eastern, so it's almost dinner time. Yeah. <laughs> so everybody, uh, uh, Mary says she has no desire to go out. Period. Who will build the webs? I will. Yeah, Vinny's building the webs, and he's playing Pokemon. Yeah, so what's your excuse? <laughs> I just don't sleep. Well, everybody, thanks for uh, tuning in today. That was uh, that was fun to work on things together and to uh, talk about things, and I enjoyed what I learned. So I think tomorrow what's, uh, I'm going to be doing a quick live stream on updating to 3.9, and then I'll hop on at, at uh, 11 o'clock my time, 1800 UTC, for the Twitch live stream, and we'll check out 3.9. What was that, Vinny? 2 o'clock Eastern. 2 o'clock Eastern. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Chuck. See you, Mary, John, Vinny, and others that are lurking. Always good to have lurkers there. So uh, I guess that wraps it up. Till the next time, enjoy your Joomla sights and God bless.